Hi there guys, I'm Nick from the Coherent Labs team and in today's short tutorial I'm going to talk about some uh, specifics for the mobile version of uh, Coherent UI for Unity and uh, how you can forward the input to Unity and how you can stop that. So just before we start, I want to talk uh, a, little a little more about uh, how it's actually implemented, the mobile version. We're just inserting uh, a view in the view hierarchy of uh, iOS or Android on top of the other views. So the input on the HTML pages that you display should be available always and you shouldn't have any trouble with that. And the only specifics that uh, have some nuances are uh, forwarding the input uh, through transparent areas or to any elements that you would like. And I'm going to show you just that. And one more thing. If you want to use the transparent mode, the transparent input state that we have, you need to include the coherent JS script since a lot of the machinery happens in coherent JS. So you have to include that for iOS and for Android. And for the take all and take no mods, you have to include uh, coherent JS as well, but only on Android. On iOS, uh, those mods work even without including our script. So let's start this. Uh, Tutorial. I've already got all my uh, resources prepared and I'm just gonna walk through them. So I'm using the Coherent UI 1.6 version. As you can see, I've got a scene setup here. The scene is uh, very simple, it just has a main camera, a directional light, and a cube. That's going to be rotating. It has a script attached to it, and I'm, I'm just gonna show you it uh, here in just a second. So the main camera has a uh, current UI view component attached. It's pointing to this URL here. It's a local resource, demo, demo HTML, and it's also transparent. That's all to it. So the cube has this tutorial script right here, which is very simple. And what it does is uh, each update step, it just rotates the cube a little. So it's a little more interactive and if there are any touches present using the Coherent UI Input Manager, which has a touches count property, if you have any touches, we just compute some uh, factor right here that uh, we're using in uh, just some completely random formula using some sines and cosines that uh, result in a color and uh, this color is set to the material of the cube. So when there are where when we have some touches, the color is changing, and that's all in the update step. This on uh, GUI function just renders a button which uh, toggles the three modes that I talked about: the transparent, take all, and take none. And as I said, for the transparent mode to work, you always need to include coherent JS, and for the take none and take all, you need to include coherent JS for Android. So that's pretty much it for this script. It's not uh, that interesting. Let's now take a look at the HTML page, the demo HTML that uh, we're going to load. So first thing we're going to do is include the coherent JS script. As I said, uh, I'm going to demonstrate all three modes on uh, Android and iOS, so I'm going to need that. And uh, the actual HTML is really simple. We have a div um, back right here, which has a no uh, co UI no input class. This class is very important, and it means that uh, this element forwards input to Unity. When it has no input, it means that uh, it does not consume input. This back div is also very important because uh, it spans the whole screen of the device. It has a width and height of 100%, uh, as that index uh, some uh, negative value, so it's behind every other element in the page, and it's completely transparent. As you can see here, RGBA four zeros. So this uh, back div, as I said, is very important. So it covers the whole screen, and if you touch on something that's uh, not an actual element of any use, the touch is going to happen on that div, and since it has this class coi no input, it's going to forward input to Unity. 
So the next thing we have is this diff area. The area has a height of 50%, so it's going to be positioned on the top half of the page. And it also has some border and a white background. And it's there just uh, to differentiate between uh, transparent and solid areas. And inside that diff we have uh, also some text and an input. So that's all. I'm going to close it and I'm just going to show that you in a browser so you can see what we can expect. So there it is. As you can see the border, uh, this is the area diff for the text and uh, the input field. Nothing fancy. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm on the right scene. And now I'm going to export that for Android first. I'm going to build an APK that uh, I'm going to install using the ADB shell. I've got the command line, the command line here prepared. ADB install uh, demo APK. So this is going to install that on my device. You can also use uh, the export to Android project uh, option in Unity, which, we're going to, which is going to export an Eclipse project, and you can uh, run it through there. The only thing that you cannot use is the build and run option, because uh, for Android we need uh, to do a post-process step, which uh, removes some necessary files and inserts uh, the UI resources. And Unity does not uh, execute that uh, post-process step uh, before actually pushing the APK to the device, so it pushes a non-repacked APK, which uh, is about 200 megabytes in size because the unneeded files are not uh, removed and also the UI resources are not inserted. So if you're building for Android, you need to use the build or the export to Eclipse project option. So everything's done. Oops, I put something that I shouldn't have. So I'm going to install that, and while we're wait, while uh, we're waiting, I'm going to export that for iOS 2, so I can show it to you immediately after we see the Android demonstration. So here's the device. It's still installing. There it is, it succeeded. So now I'm gonna show you the demonstration. There it is. So we have the white background uh, in the top half, transparent in the bottom, uh, a rotating cube, as you can see, and this button right here, which toggles the three modes, the transparent, take all and take none. So let's start with the demonstration. As you can see, if I touch in the transparent area right here, the cube is changing colors. On the other hand, if I touch here, on the white background, nothing's happening. That's because the transparent uh, mode forwards input only through transparent areas. So the touches property, the touches count property that we saw in the C -sharp script is going to be greater than zero only if we touch somewhere in a transparent area like here and not here. The next uh, input mode, I'm going to change that. It's uh, very little and you probably don't see it, but now, right now it's take none. Take none means that uh, the HTML page doesn't consume the input and it just forwards, forwards it to Unity. So if I touch here, it's still changing colors, like in the transparent mode, but if I touch on the white background, it is changing colors again. So the HTML page does not consume any of the input. And I'm gonna click uh, here one last time, and now it's gonna say take all. Take all means that uh, it's the opposite of take none, of course, and that means that uh, the HTML page is taking all the input and nothing is forwarded to Unity. So if I touch here on the white background, nothing's happening. And if I touch here on the transparent background, again, nothing's happening. That's because all of the input is consumed by the HTML page. So that's the demonstration for Android. Our iOS project is ready.
I'm just going to open that and I'm going to change the build setting that uh, disables these DCM files because I don't need them right now and they won't take uh, more time to compile. So our device is ready. There it is. Still linking, running. Uh, the Unity application should appear shortly. There it is. And we should see our cube and the white background on top. There it is. Everything is the same as Android, but uh, that's no surprise. So, again, if I touch on the transparent area, the cube is changing colors. If I touch here, nothing's happening. This is because uh, right now it's transparent. I'm uh, touching the button here, and right now it's take none. Take none, uh, as you can recall, forwards all input to Unity, so touching on the transparent area and on the solid area, both forward input to Unity and the cube is changing colors. And the last thing is the take all mode, which uh, consumes all the input. So touching here or here doesn't make any difference. The cube is not changing colors. So that's all for today's tutorial. I hope uh, you found it helpful and thanks for watching, stay tuned for more.